1939 Leyland Tiger, one of the best chassis on the market in, in the late 1930s, and with one of the best bodies on the market as well, which is by Charles Rowe of Leeds. 32 seater, absolutely standard as it came in, uh, in 1939, did it three quarters of a million miles, extremely reliable. The body was built out of Burma teak. So had, had, even though it spent many years outside, this re really needed relatively little work. It was new to Sunderland District, one of his company, not the corporation, the district, which was originally a tramway and bought by the BET Group, part of the Northern General Group, and that's number 159. And this one survived because it was bought by Ralph Watson of um, Sunderland who had a business using buses and he used to drill for water on farms and he used to live in this one and he had other chassis cut down with drilling rigs on and he, uh, he bought this off service in 1954 and in fact he just died last year at age 103 and I bought it off him. He converted into a caravan, the seats were cut out <coughs> and it was a very comfortable caravan and touring van and it was at the 1958 uh, first ever HCBS rally at the AEC Works and I eventually bought it from him in 1969 and uh, we'll, we'll illustrate the problem I had when we look inside otherwise very reliable chassis, very good uh, and I travelled on these uh, when I started school 1940-1941 on, on the school service and these were the vehicles with, which were the top new vehicles which were then running. So I remember them very well. This is the rear of 159, as you can see, 32-seater, used on mainly interurban journeys, and it actually has the coach. Uh, it has the coach chassis, and therefore quite a fast vehicle. And for United, identical chassis to this ran London Newcastle every day from from the mid 1930s to the mid 1950s, which illustrates how uh, reliable they were. One thing which you, one characteristic of Sunderland District was the rear uh, destination and Philadelphia was the depot. Philadelphia in County Durham which was a, named after the American Civil War because the, the coal owner who developed collieries there was very pro-USA and he, a, number of area, a number of villages, towns and works got uh, names like Bunker Hill from the US Civil War. Most people won't know what this little plate was but in 1931 when the Road Traffic Act implemented the national licensing of buses the traffic commissioners each in each of the counties or authorities of Britain adopted a little plate uh, the Crown showing its official. The A was Northern Traffic Area, and that's the number of the vehicle on their register of all the vehicles. And all the vehicles were registered during wartime. In wartime, they ceased to be used when it became the Ministry of War Transport. But otherwise, very original, apart from the indicators, which I've simply added for modern traffic conditions. Well, we're looking at the interior of um, Sunderland Dis District 159 now and I converted it back, after some thought, from a caravan back into a bus. The hardware could be re replicated and the, a good coach builder rebuilt the luggage racks and other features. Um, but the main problem I had was seats and getting a proper type of seat used in, in the mid-late 1930s. Uh, seats tended to be 
just cut out of vehicles and burned and uh, had no second hand value. Uh, and the seat in this vehicle, the seats were cut out in 1954. So when I got the vehicle in the 1970s, I started to look around in scrapyards and so on for a set of good uh, leather and moquette uh, seating, which would be like the seating which was originally fitted. It took me about 15 years to find them. Eventually, it was from a, through a friend of a friend and I found someone in Essex who had bought the set of Portsmouth Corporation trolleybus seats, double deck trolleybus seats, uh, in for a vehicle project he had and uh, which he later abandoned. And I was able to buy a full the full set from actually brought them up from Dartford in Kent and and fitted them as you can see. And they're a lovely seat. Art Deco moquette and uh, period period seating, exactly the sort of seating, although not identical because it's not the original moquette that was fitted to the vehicle. Now, after I'd fitted these seats, I had some left over, and fortunately, uh, they went to the Chalk Pits Museum in uh, Sussex. Uh, combined with some ex some more of these seats from a Portsmouth Corporation Bedford which had been fitted to replace the utility seating and they're now fitted as a set in a I think a, Tem a, for a Thames Valley vehicle which is very pleasing. So I hope the ambience really is that of the late 1930s as I travel to school every day on these from 1940-1941 when these, of course, were the top vehicles in the fleet. Right. Well, standard controls in the cab for the period. Uh, steering, no power assistance. Uh, left clutch, foot pedal, centre brake. The brakes are hydraulic on this vehicle with vacuum assistance from the engine. Uh, Leyland's on the right had a push-on handbrake which is quite un quite un unusual for commercial vehicles. Most were pull-on uh, brakes. Uh, Four-speed gearbox uh, as standard. Top, sp top speed of these um, would be 50 to 55 miles an hour with the coach with the coach differential and my guess is that the United coaches probably did this. Um, the only made one or two changes. Um, I've got a indicator, I fitted indicators, uh, traffic gators on the left uh, and you can see one on the right which shines through the cab window and it's a modern extinguisher as well. But straightforward vehicle, very reliable and people often forget how reliable these vehicles were. Uh, from 1940 to 1960, travelling every day, I only ever saw one broken down vehicle, and that was a puncture. Uh, whereas you, you do see rather more these days, as buses have got more complicated and sophisticated, and of course, easier to drive. Although the, the pleasure about a crash box system is getting it right is um, Quite an achievement, and uh, uh, and very pleasant when you do get it right. Well, it's um, Leyland's well-known 1930s 8.6 litre engine used in virtually all the heavy vehicles. This is a model actually E102 engine no, type 102. Um, feature of Leyland, the unusual feature of Leyland at the time was they used a long cylinder head, a full six uh, cylinder head covering six cylinders. Most of the other manufacturers, or nearly all of them, used two sets in two threes. Uh, but the problem being that at, at that time the risk was overheating the engine and warping over the uh, cylinder head. 
but I haven't had any overheating problems with this with, with this engine. Um, interesting for 1939 is the uh, the Bosch horn with Germany clearly uh, uh, clearly delineated. Um, But they collaborated with um, CAV in, in the fuel pump anyway. They tend to be CAV Bosch uh, fuel pumps. But you can see the inline fuel pump. showing the uh, heater, the takeoffs for the heater pipes running to the uh, Clayton heater which, uh, which you've seen on the interior of the, interior of the vehicle.